a lot of you are hard stuck at your rank, whether it be gold, platinum, silver, diamond, maybe even low level onyx. And you're asking yourself, why does this rank system stink? Well, I'm here to help. I am a Metafy coach to over 22 students for Halo Infinite. And there are a couple things that I see pretty often, things that I see constantly with the students that I coach. And you know what I figured? We got 500 subs this month with YouTube, so why not give the people the content that they want and deserve? If you like content like this, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube as well, and turn on notifications so you get my videos right when they come out. But here are three tips that I see my students making all the time. Sometimes it's just one thing that you're doing wrong in your matchmaking games constantly, a bad habit that you just continue to do that keeps you ranked low and uh, we're gonna stop that from happening here. If this is you, you need to make sure that you are stopping that from happening. Let's start with the first one. It's gonna be positioning. Now you've heard this before, but I wanna get a different outlook on it. I want you to see it a little bit differently. So let's talk about this a bit. Now positioning is a very deep topic. It could range from very basic to very intricate depending on the game type. Lots of factors that are involved, and unfortunately, we don't have hours and hours to go over this stuff here, so I'm going to take it to a very baseline level, and we're going to start with just how are you positioned on the map in terms of power positions. A lot of you players out there don't utilize power positions often enough. You're over here sitting on C-plot on live fire when C-plot doesn't give you a lot of point of view. It doesn't give you a lot of areas to see around the map. You don't have a, a, a vantage point when instead you can go top tower. Look how much more you see on the top tower here. Look how much more damage you can output from the top tower because of how much more you can see. And it's these power positions that are not utilized by players at lower ranks. And if you utilize these power positions here on, you know, top tower in live fire, or for another example here on recharge on glass, another great power position to utilize as well, if you utilize these power positions a bit more, you could definitely do a better job. But positioning is not just about power positions. Positioning is also about putting yourself in a position where you can stay alive if crap hits the fan, so to speak. If you're getting pushed by three different people or if maybe there's pressure on the outside of, uh, you know, overshield on live fire, you're positioned in a, in a way that you can get out if if things really start to ramp up or if a push is starting to, to hit you hard. And, and that's what kind of lets you live that extra life. That's what lets you play your life a little bit better. And it will prevent a lot of deaths as well. So make sure to utilize these power positions. Make sure to utilize this positioning where you're pretty much sitting here and you can get out of a situation if it comes down to it. It's very, very important to do so. Tip number two is gonna be over challenging and I know a lot of you guys struggle from this one So don't lie to me. Okay, tell me in the comments if this is something you struggle from But it's about getting into that 1v1 and just over challenging the 1v1 just you're you're no shields and you're like Yeah, well, well, I'm gonna beat this guy. Well, I can tell you right now uh, I struggle from this as an old man and as a man on mouse and keyboard I gotta show all these young kids how it's done so no matter how many shots are put into me, no matter how many shields I have or how much shields I have, I, I will challenge you and I will probably die for it. And this is why I'm stuck at 1700 Onyx. But I always say, do what I say and not what I do. So once again, over challenging. Sometimes it's okay to get out of a fight if you think you're gonna lose. If you have a way to get out of the fight, it's okay to try to get out of the fight. It's also okay to just put two shots into a player, maybe a player that you just don't have a good angle on, or maybe a fight that feels a bit uncomfortable. Put two shots into that guy and get the heck out of there. It's all good to do that because guess what? Even though you think your teammates are a bunch of rocks, some of them, when they see weak shields, they light up like a Christmas tree. They're gonna get that kill and you're gonna get that assist and you're gonna stay alive, which also provides value for your team. Now, sometimes dying for your team is good, but unfortunately, we don't have enough time in this video to go over something like that. It is a very in-depth and uh, intricate topic that also, you know, has a lot to do with the game type you're playing and the situation that you're in. And I've said this before, Halo is a very situational game. 
I get a lot of like very specific questions in my chat, but it's a little bit difficult to go over these these questions. That's why I essentially push people to the Metafy. You get a coaching session. I watch one of your VODs and we can really break down each play so you really understand why things go wrong. Descri uh, in the description below, you'll see a link to the Metafy if you're interested in taking your game to the next level and taking it a bit more seriously. But uh, regardless, sometimes it's okay to die, but most of the time, most of the time it's better to keep yourself alive so that you can provide value on the map and continue to provide pressure with your team. Halo is a numbers game. And if you go down, guess what? That makes it a 3v4. And uh, I didn't do well in school, but four on their team against three on our team, I think we lose unless we have snipe down or something. But anyway, the third tip and the last one for this video, we've got many more videos to come. Don't worry, hit the sub button if you liked it. It's gonna be over strafing. So many of you guys focus on strafing. So many of you guys come into my chat and say, active, how do I strafe better? Well, let me tell you something. If you don't believe it coming from me, believe it coming from a pro player in Collect. Collect is a player who was very, very good last season. His rookie year in season one and in season two really started to come into his own. And one of the things I asked him is, what, is, what have you improved in your game? Well, number one, he said he's an entry fragger and he wanted to go in to do damage, but also stay alive. But another thing he did, he said was, he stopped trying to overcomplicate fights. Instead of out strafing and out maneuvering everybody on his screen, he just hit the four shot. Now, obviously it's a five shot now with the bandit, which provided can be a little bit of a, a more of an individual skill gap. Still hitting those five shots trumps everything else because if you can hit the five shots, it doesn't matter what your strafe is, you're gonna kill the opponent before they kill you. And one of the big things about that is using your movement to shoot. And this is kind of coupled in, it's a very big tip here, but using your movement to shoot a lot of people, whether you're on controller or mouse and keyboard, you'll use your aimer a lot more than you'll use your movement. And uh, one of the tips that you know a lot of pros will give you is use your movement to shoot. Use your you know aimer a lot less than you do and instead strafe into your shots. And generally you'll get a good strafe because you're strafing in your shots, but at the same time, you're gonna hit the five shot. You're gonna get the perfects, you're gonna get higher accuracy and all of that will fall into place. So that's something I can say is stop overthinking about strafing and, and just hit those five shots. Now, there is a rule that goes outside of that. And I would say if you're no shields or if you're half shields, let's say you're in a fight where there's not a there's not a very high percentage chance you're gonna win that fight then maybe it's okay to implement a little bit of a crowd strafe I do crowd strafing a lot of the time too but it'll be okay to implement a little bit of a crowd strafe here and there to try to like you know outmaneuver them so that you can get that extra shot uh, but but it's not something to really focus on the the focus should be to just hit those shots and and strafing should just be second nature crowd strafing to me right now that's second nature. I, I pretty much do it no matter what. I, I'm pretty good at, at avoiding, you know, damage as best as I can. And it's just due to habit. So if you make strafing a habit, then yes, that's fine. But otherwise, focus on hitting those five shots and you'll do so much better. Now, these are just three mistakes that I see often with all of my students uh, that I coach. And of course, there are many other mistakes that they make as well. No offense to them. I love you guys. But uh, sometimes it's just one mistake or one bad habit that'll stop you from ranking up. And if you like this sort of content that is free, make sure you hit the like button, sub, and let me know again in the comment section below that you like this content. And of course, I'll do more of it. Uh, if you're interested in Metify yourself, taking your game to the next level and taking it seriously, more of like a personalized thing, hit the link down below. It's the Metify link there. Get yourself a coaching session. But otherwise, I'll keep doing this content. I stream every single day as well on YouTube now, on Twitch, and on Kick. So if you want to stop by those streams, they start about 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But if not, guess what? I will see you in the next video.